Listen, I'm going to keep it real with y'all, man. If you're going through baby mama drama, you paying a lawyer so you can get custody or get off child support, you got anything going on in your life as it relates to paternity issues, any of that, this video is going to be highly triggering to you, man. It's so bad that even women are like, God damn, these women are evil, right? Usually they champion each other. This video, crazy, bro, but we're going to get into it. Like, comment, and subscribe. Also, send your videos to thatboywillreacts at gmail.com. Let's get into to it. No one could deny that mom was denying father his parenting time, his court ordered parenting time. Mm. So when he took her back to court, you would have thought, well, he would have won. Mm. But no, he didn't. And here's why. In the parenting plan, he got every other weekend from six o'clock Friday to six o'clock Sunday. He was to pick the child up from mom and mom was to pick the child up from him at the end of his parenting time. Okay. Well, that never happened. And here's why. Mom would text dad every time it was his weekend and say that the child had a school play or the child was sick or the child and her were gonna go out of town for something. Every weekend it was something. Mm. And dad never went and picked the child up because he just assumed that if mom said he couldn't, he couldn't. Wow. He was putting mom in charge and mom wasn't in charge, the court was in charge. Mm. Where dad failed is he failed to go and pick the child up as ordered by the court. Had he done that, and had he been denied parenting time, the court could have easily found mom in contempt and actually sentenced her to jail or given custody to dad. But he didn't do that. Remember guys, if you have a parenting plan and you have a weekend or you have parenting time, and mom is telling you that you can't exercise your parenting time because the child has some other activity, You've still got to go to pick the child up when you're supposed to. If you don't do that, then you hadn't followed through on your obligation and you're going to lose that contempt case. Mm. Dad got custody of his son when he was about 13 years old. Mom couldn't take care of him anymore. Mom had had custody since they got divorced when the kid was about three years old. But now the kid's gotten bigger and it's kind of out of control. So dad took it. And dad started doing a good job raising him, got him straightened out, got him disciplined. Just like and men do. Dad went back to court and said, hey, look, I want to officially have custody of my son. I've had him now for what, about six months. And when he did that, the court gave him custody, but he also asked the court to give him child support from mom. He'd been paying child support to her for about 10 years. Time for her to pay child support to him. She didn't want to do that, but she had no choice. Well, the judge heard the evidence, heard about mom's income. She made about $30,000 a year. She had a W-2 that she showed to the court. Dad, same thing, W-2, about $60,000 a year. But here's the kicker. Dad was living with his girlfriend and had been for about five years. And his girlfriend was contributing to the expenses. As a matter of fact, she put her whole check into a joint account with his whole check. And out of that check, they paid expenses, including the house note that the father owned. He owned that house, the girlfriend didn't, so every time that he would make a house note payment, he would get a little bit more in equity for that house. Well, mom's lawyer said, hey, look, judge, we need to impute, meaning add additional income to dad's income for the gift that his girlfriend's giving him by helping him pay that house note because he's getting <laughs> equity for that house every time she makes a, a contribution to that. What? Well, the judge thought about it for a second and says, you're right. So the judge imputed about $800 a month to dad's income, which meant that mom's child support was much lower by about $150. So dad's income included that additional $800 for the house note payment and mom's income remained at 30,000 and it made child support about $200. It would have been about $350, but with that imputed income, it was only about $200 a month. Nah, what do you think about that? You shitting me. Every Saturday when it was dad's parenting time, mom would drop their child off to be with dad. She usually dropped the child off between eight and nine. Problem is dad was not there. Dad had to work every Saturday from seven o'clock till five o'clock. So he didn't even get off work until five and wouldn't even see his child until 5.30. Well, mom didn't like that. She didn't like dropping the child off with dad's mom, with the babysitter, with dad's girlfriend. She wanted to petition the court to modify dad's parenting time to take that Saturday away because after all, he wasn't even seeing the child then. Well, here's the problem with that. 
mom worked too. And Mondays through Fridays when mom had the child, she worked from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. She had to take her child to uh, before school care at seven o'clock. Had to leave the house at seven, get in there about 7.30 so she could get to work at eight. And she couldn't pick the child up until about 5.30 after she got off work. Okay. So she missed all that time with the child too. So what's the difference here? Well, there's not. When you have your child for parenting time, it's as if you're a single parent. You gotta care for that child no matter what. And if you're at work, you gotta make arrangements for either before school care, after school care, a babysitter, whatever it is, but you're a single parent during that time and it doesn't matter whether you're mom or dad, mm. there's no difference. She's gonna lose that case if she tries to take it to court. Dad's rights to his well, daughter were new. terminated and the stepfather was allowed to adopt the daughter. Here's what happened. He and his wife were divorced about five years ago. And when they got divorced, he moved to Texas and she stayed with the daughter in Tennessee. They had what's called a long distance parenting plan. He was allowed to have every summer, every fall break, every spring break, and alternating Christmas. Well, one year he lost his job and he was unable to exercise his parenting time during fall break because he just didn't have a way to get up to Tennessee to pick his daughter up. Well, Christmas came and he didn't get any, any parenting time during the Christmas break either. When spring break rolled around, his daughter had some other plans. She was getting a little bit older and he just decided that he would forego spring break. Well, before his summer parenting time began, he got served with a petition to terminate his parental rights. He had gone more than four months without having any meaningful contact with his daughter and had gone more than daughter. four months in this situation without paying child support because of his job. Well, unfortunately, those two things together are grounds that you can use to terminate somebody's parental rights. And that's exactly what happened here. The judge heard the evidence. His hands were kind of tied because the two statutory grounds for termination existed. And the judge found that because he had no other choice. And then he found that the stepfather was a good person and loved that little girl. And it would be in her best interest to have the stepfather adopt her. And that's what happened. The father was absolutely devastated. I see parents in that situation more than they really should be. A lot of people don't understand how easy it is to have your rights terminated. What do you think about that? Four months of not seeing your child or four months with not paying child support? Do you think that's too little time to terminate somebody's parental I'm rights? I'm catching two bodies. Mom and dad lived together for the first three years of the child's life. After that, they went their separate ways. After year five, mom had remarried Dad hadn't seen the child in over a year, and now the stepfather was saying, hey, maybe I should adopt the child. Mom agreed. Mom and stepdad filed a petition to terminate father's parental rights because he hadn't seen the child in over a year. You know, it's very easy to have your rights terminated to your child. In Tennessee, as in most states, all you have to prove is that a parent has failed to visit or have any meaningful contact with the child for at least four months, or has failed to pay any support whatsoever or do anything to support the child financially for a period of four months. And that's really all you have to prove in order to take that first step to terminate a parent's rights. In this case, the father's rights were terminated and the stepfather was allowed to adopt the child. It's very upsetting to the natural father. He had always thought that he would come back and be a part of the child's life but he never got that opportunity. They be what do you messing think about that? over people, dog. I was in court the other day and I was watching a case that was going on where mom was being held in contempt of court for not allowing dad to see the kid. As she should. Dad had every other weekend from six o'clock Friday to six o'clock Sunday. And he was supposed to go pick the kids up from mom at the start of his time. Mom was supposed to pick the kids up from him at the end of his parenting time. That's what their order said, their parenting plan that they had agreed to and the court had approved. All right. Well, what had happened was mom had told dad, hey, look, don't come get the kids this weekend because they've got a ball game to go to or we're going to be out of town. She kept doing this week and week after week and dad never got his parenting time. Well, when mom got up on the witness stand, her lawyer was pretty shrewd and he asked her a couple of questions. First question he said was, Hey, Miss Jones, last weekend when it was Mr. Jones's parenting time, what, what time did he come pick the kids up? Miss Jones said, well, he didn't. And the lawyer said, what? He didn't come pick the kids up? No, he sure didn't. 
Okay, well, what about the time before? What time did he get there to get the kids? Oh, he didn't show up then either. You mean he didn't show up to pick the kids up? She said, no, he sure didn't. This went on and on and on, all the way back to the first allegation that dad had made about her not letting him see the kids. Every (coughs) single time he hadn't shown up to get the kids. Yeah, she probably told him not to come, but if he had come, she may have given him the kids. If he had come, he could have called the cops and gotten the kids that way. But he didn't do that. He never showed up because mom told him that he wasn't getting the kids, so he just didn't show up. Guys, if you're ever in that situation, make sure that you follow through on your obligation. Make sure you go and pick the kids up from mom when it's the beginning of your parenting time, if that's what your order says. Otherwise, you're going to end up just like this father, and the mom's going to get away with it. Chris was in the military serving his country, stationed overseas in Baghdad. Well, while he was overseas, the state of Tennessee decided that they would file a petition against him, claiming he was the father of a child and owed child support. The interesting thing is the state knew that he was overseas in Baghdad and in the military, but they went ahead anyway. Court date was set. They showed up for court, but he didn't. He didn't have any notice of it. He's in Baghdad. Well, the state went ahead and got a judgment declaring that he's the father of the child, ordering him to pay child support of over $500 a month. Jesus and as soon as he started getting dinged with that $500 a month from his check, he got curious. What's up? Why am I getting this money taken out of my check? Well, he realized what had happened. He immediately filed a motion asking the court to allow him to take a DNA test, which the court did. And it turns out that he wasn't the father. So what did the court do? The court set aside the order finding he was the father and set aside the child support order and ordered the state of Tennessee to reimburse him over $2,500 for what they had taken from him because they knew he was in the military and shouldn't have done it. Well, the state didn't like that. So they appealed to a higher court and the higher court agreed with the state and said, nope, he's not entitled to get that money back from the state of Tennessee. What do you think about that? That makes me mad every time I read That's because the state gets some of that money. I'm going to put a copy or a link to that case in the comments below. Check it out. Tell me what you think. Dad had parenting time with his son every summer from June 1st to June 15th. On June 15th at 6 o'clock, he was supposed to return the child to mom. Well, June 15th at 6 o'clock came and went, no child. Mom was visibly upset. She had made plans to go out of town the next day and she couldn't reach him. Finally, he texted her about 10 o'clock that night and said, hey, I'm gonna keep him, we're having fun, I'll bring him back Tuesday. Well, when he brought him back on Tuesday, he had a process server waiting to serve him contempt papers. She had gone to a lawyer, had the lawyer draw up contempt of court papers, charging him with contempt of court for failing to follow the court's orders. He was served, had a court date, went to court, the judge found him in contempt for violating the order, sentenced him to 10 days and suspended all but eight days. He did 48 hours in jail. The judge was hoping he would get his attention. You know, a court order is just like a law, any other law. And if you break that law, you can go to jail. In Tennessee, the penalty is 10 days for every violation. If you're five months behind on child support, that's five violations. That could be 50 days in jail. In this case, the judge suspended the sentence, but the judge didn't have to do that. So keep in mind, A judge's order is just like a law. It's just like the DUI law, just like vandalism, anything else. It has a penalty if you break it. So don't break the court's law, the court's order. Mom was buying drugs with the child support money. Dad found out about it. He was livid. Took her to court. Took about four months to get to court. And during that time period, he had to keep paying the child support. And she kept buying drugs. Finally, he got custody and no more child support. But for that four month period, he had to continue to pay child support to her, knowing that she was gonna use that money for something other than for the benefit of the child. You know, when you pay child support, you lose whatever authority you have to say how that money's spent. That money gets spent however the other parent wants to spend it, whether it's the mother or the father. And I don't have a problem if a parent pays their car note or their apartment rent or their house note with some of that money, as long as the child benefits. But when a parent spends that money totally on themselves, purely for drugs or jewelry or whatever they buy that has no benefit to the child. I have a problem with that. But the courts don't do anything about it. The courts are not going to micromanage how that money's spent. So once you pay child support, you lose all control over how that money's spent. What do you think about that? Dad had to pay three years worth of child support twice. Here's what happened. 
when he and the mom got divorced, the divorce paper said that he was supposed to pay the money directly through the state. Well, he didn't do that because he didn't know he was supposed to. It was kind of in the fine print of the parenting plan. Well, he continued to pay it like he always had, directly to mom. And mom took it, cashed the checks, used it for the kids. Well, move forward three years. She gets some government assistance and the state begins to take over the child support. And when they did, they looked to see how he was supposed to pay the child support. And they saw he was supposed to pay it through the state. Wow. They then looked at the records of the state and saw no payments having been made wow. for three years. So they filed a contempt case against dad saying he hadn't paid child support. Well, dad didn't have an attorney, didn't want an attorney, thought he could do it himself, went to court, was unable to prove that he paid it directly to mom and mom didn't testify to that. So guess what? The judge ordered dad to Whoa. pay three years worth of back child world, support boy. after he had already paid it to her. That just doesn't seem fair. And I see lots of cases like this. So make sure you check your paperwork when you get divorced or when you have a child support case, make sure you know how you're supposed to pay that child support, because if you don't pay it the way it's ordered, you're not going to get credit for it and you're going to end up like this guy and end up owing years worth of child support oh, twice. God. The parties have been going through this divorce for over a year, way too long in this situation. Neither party had any real property. They had a couple of cars, a bank account. The husband had a retirement account, but there were no minor children, so it should have been easy. Mm. Well, finally, after about a year, they sat down at the table, they worked everything out, signed the paperwork, filed it with the court, and got a court date. Now, they all show up at the court date and everybody's looking at the wife going, she looks pregnant. And nobody wanted to ask her, except the judge. Mm. The judge looked down when she took the stand and said, ma'am, are you pregnant? And she very sheepishly replied, yes, ma'am, I am. Well, they couldn't have the divorce hearing at that point. You know, you cannot have a divorce or get divorced in most states if you are pregnant. And the reason why is because we don't know if you're going to have the baby. We don't know if it's your husband's child or somebody else's child. So all of those issues have to be taken care of I before the judge that. can grant the divorce. So the judge will usually not grant a divorce if you're pregnant. And the problem, real problem is, is if you're married and you get pregnant by somebody else, there is a presumption in the law, meaning that the law just assumes that that baby is your husband. I knew that. And it takes now a DNA test in most states to rebut that presumption and have that child disestablished as a child of your husband. Wow. But I knew Mary that was 21 years old and in her last year in college. She and some sorority sisters went on a weekend trip one weekend and ended up going to a fraternity party. Well, at that fraternity party, Mary had a little bit too much to drink, and when she did, she ended up hooking up with the guy that she had just met, and the result was she got pregnant. Mm. She didn't find out about it until two months later. Mm. The problem is she had a boyfriend back at her home college and she didn't tell him anything about the relationship she had and when she found out she was pregnant she led him to believe it was his child typical so he ended up marrying her and began to raise the child as his own mm -hmm. thinking that the child was his mm -hmm. we'll move forward 20 years child is now 19 years old and the child takes one of these dna tests where you send it in and they give you the results and tell you who your what your genealogy is and who your aunts, uncles, first, second, third, fourth cousins are. And he found out that the man that had raised him, that he thought was his biological father, was in fact not his biological father. Well, well he went back there. home and he told his mom and dad both about this. His dad first thought, that can't be right. I mean, I, I'm your father. I know I'm your father. But the mom finally confessed and said that there was a chance that he was not the father of the child. This was devastating for everybody. If the mom had just been honest from the from the get-go and told the truth, then none of this would have happened. The guy probably still would have married her and probably still raised the child, but would have done so with the knowledge that it wasn't his biological child. And the child probably would have been told that at some point and would not have had to suffer the trauma that that child suffered when he was 19 years old and found out the truth. Man, I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. This was a very educational video, man. It really was. If you don't have kids and you watch this video, you have a blueprint to protect yourself at this point. You know some of the pitfalls. I will do a video just like this again, depending on how well this video does. We'll do a part two. But guys, stay safe out there. Protect your seed. If you have kids already, use this advice that this man just told you in this video. I'm gonna get at y'all on the next one. Guys, for a limited time only, I'm gonna be offering one-on-one -on -one consulting. Listen, why should you 
you even listen to me for one i get millions of views every single month i make over five figures doing this last month i got over ten thousand new subscribers i mean i feel like i know enough to get someone especially if you have under ten thousand subscribers i could definitely help you with information that could possibly get you to the next level if that sounds like something you want to get into hit the link man it's in the comments and it's also in the description i look forward to hearing from you